The following is a production of Cary TV, the town of Cary's government access channel. I'm Harold Weinbreck, Mayor of Cary, and thank you for joining us for this month's episode of Cary Matters. This program was created to help keep you informed and provide information about issues that council members are working on for our community. My co-host this month is my good friend, Laurie Bush, who is one of our at-large representatives on council. And Laurie's been serving the citizens of Cary since 2011 and has just been re-elected to serve a second term. Laurie, congratulations on your election, your re-election, and uh, thank you for being on this month's episode of Kerry Matters. Well, thank you, Mayor. I can't think of any place I'd rather be. I'm actually looking quite forward to serving for the next four years, and it's my hope that the next four years will be even greater than the last four have been. And by the way, congratulations to you for being re-elected. This is now your third term, right? It is, thank you very much. And it's an honor and a privilege to serve as the Cary Mayor, and I'm grateful to be able to serve a third term. As you know, one of the most important decisions we make every year is on the town's budget. And since the town's budget cycle is from July 1st through June 30th, it's important to set priorities early in the budget cycle. A few weeks ago, the council and staff met for several hours to help set those priorities for next year's budget. So I thought it would be a good idea to use this episode to point out some of the council's most important budget items. What do you think? That sounds like a good plan. And uh, then we can go and give everyone an update on what's going on downtown. And of course, answer a couple of questions that we've received from our citizens. Okay, sounds like a plan. The budget we're operating under right now was adopted this past June and went into effect on July 1st. But to make that happen every year, the Town of Cary's budget staff works year-round and it's important to set priorities as soon as possible. So at our recent fall mini-retreat, the council and staff reviewed several topics to help set that direction for next year's budget. Our discussions included our current financial position, the town's capital improvement plan, and the council's strategic issues. The first discussion summarized our financial position and we, as we began this budget year, we are in great financial position according to the criteria set by the three major bond rating agencies. And we have the highest credit rating, AAA by all of them, allowing us to get the lowest interest rate possible for loans. One of the contributing criteria includes per capita debt level, which dropped by 20% during the last five years. Debt service is about 11% of the operating budget, and while it will increase to 13% when we issue the next round of voter-approved bonds, we still will be below our self-imposed 15% ceiling. Another contributing criteria point that is noticed by the bond rating agencies is our very healthy general fund balance. We are significantly above the required minimum of $34.4 million and have a current balance of about $75.4 million. What do you think about that? Well, you're absolutely right, Mayor, and that fund balance was a major part of our capital improvement discussion during the second part of that mini retreat. We talked about whether to invest some of the fund balance in addressing our $300 million group of capital projects that have all been backlogged. And it was a great discussion. And after much deliberation, the council came up with four top initiatives. Parking for the new downtown library that we recently talked about in a work session a community center at Mills Park, 
completing the future phases of the downtown park and future economic development opportunities. Now, while there was a lot of support on council for each of these, the one idea that everyone on council listed as a top priority was addressing the parking needs for the future downtown library. So, based on this discussion, staff will bring funding options back during the future stages of the budget process, along with the rest of the needs for the coming year. That's right. Our third major discussion topic at the mini retreat was on the council's strategic operational issues. Council members expressed our top items to consider when making decisions about the recommended budget for the coming year. Some of those included historic structures, bike and ped opportunities, infrastructure in West Cary, middle school capacity, struggling shopping center areas, greenway connectivity, public-private partnership opportunities, issues for the aging population, and more. In fact, there are, were more than two dozen council suggestions, which should make for a pretty challenging budget year. Yeah, we were all coming up with a few ideas here and there, and most of those ideas come from our citizens, so it's always good to have the feedback. Uh, that wasn't even all of the direction given by council for next year's budget. We also asked staff to consider budgeting for recycling containers at the ball fields and to try to get private sponsors for those solar trash cans that you might have seen out there. We talked about school crossing guards at the middle schools and we eventually decided against it because mostly because the principals of those schools said that they don't really need it. We even discussed changing this program that you're watching right now, Carry Matters. And Mayor, if I remember right, this was your idea about eight years ago, right? It sure was. I think you've done <laughs> quite a bit with it. Yes, I have. Everyone on council has had a hand in its success, though. And I know we're all excited about reviewing recommendations for the next generation of Carry Matters. In fact, if you have ideas, please let us know. Okay, we're going to take a very short break and afterwards we're going to talk about what's going on in downtown. The town of Cary invites you to kick off the season with a full day of holiday cheer in downtown Cary. On Saturday, December 5th, the Heart of the Holiday Celebration features a host of activities that include Santa and the town of Cary's Christmas tree lighting celebration. Looking for fun gift ideas? Try Cary Theater movie passes, a Skate Cary membership, fitness passes, or even a Parks and Recreation gift card. Bring the whole family. It's the Heart of the Holidays in Cary. For more information, visit townofcary.org. We're back. Thanks for staying with us. We're frequently asked about uh, what's going on in downtown, uh, specifically the streets, the park, the future businesses. So why don't you give everyone an update about the things happening on Academy Street, which is our signature downtown street. It is, and well, I'm happy to say that we're more than halfway there with the Academy Street updates. It's been under construction for several months now, and it's going to stay that way for several more. We anticipate that the utility upgrades and the streetscape will be completed by this time next year. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and not a moment too soon, because whether you drive through or you work or visit downtown, we know that you've had to think about things quite differently to plan your trip. Downtown, though, is absolutely open for business, and we hope that you'll continue to patronize not only the businesses, but also the Cary Theater and the Cary Arts Center. Just follow those signs, and remember, there is plenty of free parking. And speaking of parking, <laughs> remember the parking? The downtown park is finally moving ahead. Uh, the first two acres of the seven-acre park will begin construction soon and it'll take about a year to complete. So it's on the same block next to the park will be where the town's new library is, which we spoke about recently in a work session. Now this is currently being designed 
and will hopefully be more than your standard library. Currently, the library is scheduled to be completed in 2018. And the Maiden Inn, by the way, is also on that same block. This Four Diamond Boutique Hotel is scheduled to open later this winter. And there is even more being discussed and contemplated on Academy Street. And even more coming on the surrounding streets, such as Chatham, Harrison, and Walker. It's a great place to be. It is. There's a lot of stuff happening downtown. So stay tuned because we're, we expect to do a few more announcements really, really soon. Okay, now to the questions. I received a question not too long ago that asked if I and the other members of the town's governing body think that it's a good idea to allow Islamic organizations to grow and prosper in Cary. Well, about 95% of Cary residents are from somewhere else other than Cary. 18% are in fact from other countries and actually 50 different nationalities are represented here in Cary. It's been our practice in Cary to embrace diversity and to celebrate the gifts, the talents, the education and the culture that each of us has to offer. For it's only through mutual respect and understanding that we can reach our potential as a community. I, along with my colleagues, have no interest in discriminating against a particular group of people because of their religion. Okay, so <sighs> exhale. Yep, All right. Absolutely. Another question we received, and it's one we receive pretty often, was about installing traffic signals. This is a lot lighter than the Islamic question. So why don't you take that one? Oh, okay, well, give me the easy one. Uh, well, I know a lot of people believe that it's the town's decision on whether or not we install traffic signals. While the town does measure criteria for a traffic signal, the actual authority to approve a traffic signal lies with the North Carolina Department of Transportation. We sometimes refer to that as the North Carolina DOT. So while we and our citizens may want traffic signals at every particular intersection or at certain intersections, we have to ask for that approval and that usually happens only when that criteria is met. So that's often, by the way, referred to as a warrant for a light, that criteria being met. Very good, thank you. That's one of your favorite topics. It is, I get a lot of email on that. I do. Installation of traffic signals is confusing and sometimes an emotional issue for some. It is. Well, coming up after the break, we're gonna give you some insights into what's coming up at Town Hall in December and how you can be involved. And there's a lot of stuff going on in December. So we'll be right back. Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow! But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the ring cycle. Separate. <laughs> cook. Fire in the hole! And chill. We chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. We're back, and in this final segment of Carry Matters, we want to talk about some of the other exciting things happening in December and how you can be involved. Laurie, what council meetings do we have coming up this month? Oh, uh, not the fun stuff. Let's <laughs> talk about those fun council meetings. Well, we have several meetings this month with a few changes to our normal schedule. Our meetings designated for quasi-judicial hearings is set for Tuesday, December 8th. That will also be the night, a big night for us, that four council members will take the oath of office, including you, Mayor, yes. and me, as well as Don France and our new District D representative, Ken George. We have one regularly scheduled council meeting for Thursday, December 10th, and we also have a work session scheduled for Tuesday, December 15th. But come on, Mayor, tell us what else is going on in December. Okay, all the fun stuff. Yeah. Well, as is normally the case, there's a lot of hustle and bustle during the holiday season and December is full of events and activities. 
the North Carolina Chinese Lantern Festival is going on the entire month at the Booth Amphitheater and it's a beautiful display of lights. That is a must see. There's the Christmas tree lighting on the 5th, the JC's Christmas Parade on the 12th, and the Jewish Cultural Festival on the 10th. Carrie players will be presenting Dashing Through the Snow on the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, the 7th at the Cary Arts Center. A Celtic Christmas presented by a group from Riverdance will be on the 15th in Cary downtown. And there are even more events at the Cary Town, such as the Cary Town Band, the Raleigh Boy Choir, the Cary Concert Singers. So, Make sure to check out the calendar of events at the thetownofcary.org. Oh, I almost forgot the Town of Cary will once again host the NCAA Division I College Cup for Women. So if you want to see the best collegiate soccer players and the crowning of a national champion, make sure you're at the Wake Med Soccer Park on December 4th and 6th. And you're it's be there? so much fun. I went to the last one and it was great. It was absolutely great. Uh, well, you should also probably mention that some of the schedules have changed for garbage and recycling. You should get to handle oh, that one yeah. too. Good point, good point. During the week of Christmas, town offices will be closed on the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Garbage recycling and yard waste will be collected one day earlier that week and the following week, which includes New Year's Day. And Christmas tree collection at the curbside will begin the first week in January. A lot of people put them out much earlier than that. <laughs> but make sure to remove all the non-vegetative materials such as lights and tinsel and wire and ornaments and stands and everything else that goes Small with the children. tree. That's right. <laughs> if you need more information about that and holiday collections, just go to the Public Works page on the town's website. Oh, it's all great information. It's it all is. good to know. Well, that's it for this edition of Carry Matters. We appreciate your watching and hope that what we've shared has been interesting for you. Please let us hear from you. Your time is important, and we want this show to be of value to you as we work to bring you, our citizens, closer to your government. That's right. And remember, help keep carry litter free, clean, green, and beautiful by volunteering with our Spruce program. Thanks for watching, and as always, thanks for choosing to call Carry home. Happy holidays. This has been a production of Cary TV. Visit the Town of Cary's website at townofcary.org.